Hello everyone, I'm Doria, and welcome to today's Open Oiler OECA course. In this episode, I will talk about Open Oiler's disk storage, which covers local disks, network disks, and object storage. This course introduces the basic concepts of local disk storage, operations on how to mount and use storage disks, and common operation commands. The video is split into five parts Disk classification, partitioning, formatting, mounting, and information viewing First, let's look at how we classify disks Disks can be divided into HDDs and SSDs which differ in their physical properties and subsequently their performance An HDD is a piece of computer storage device that combines precision machinery, microelectronic circuit, and electromagnetic conversion. It consists of one or more aluminum or glass magnetic disks, which store data reads and writes in addition to a head, a rotating shift, a control motor, a head controller, a data converter, interfaces, and caches. By contrast, an SSD is a solid-state electronic storage chip array that comprises multiple flash chips, caches, and a main control unit. Compared with HDDs, SSDs provide faster data read and seek and can accelerate the OS and software startup. In terms of interfaces, disks can also be classified into IDE, SATA, SASI, and FC disks. IDE is also known as PATA, that is Parallel ATA, a common standard used to connect hard disks or IDE devices to a computer system. SATA stands for Serial ATA. Another protocol is SASI, the basis of SAS. Generally, Server disks adopt the SASI or SAS protocol. SASI and SAS disks support hot swap and can deliver higher performance and stability than IDE and SATA disks. What are more expensive have smaller capacities and are noisier. The FC interface enables direct fiber channel communications of disks a practice that improves I.O. performance and throughput, meeting the demands of performance-intensive systems. Disk partitioning is a technique that aims to better manage and organize data and improve data access speed and efficiency. This technique divides a disk into multiple storage units. Generally, a disk is divided into a primary partition and an extended partition the latter of which is further divided into multiple logical partitions. The total disk capacity is equal to the combined primary and extended partitions, and the extended partition capacity is the sum of all logical partitions. The system administrator can use different partitions for different functions. Partitions can also control application or user capacity, allow multiple boots or different operating systems from the same disk. Separate OS and program files from users' files create separate areas for virtual memory exchange and limit disk sp space to improve the performance of diagnosis tools and backup images. On Linux, disks and partitions are stored in a dev directory as devices. The HD indicates IDE disks, SD is the SASI disks, FD the floppy disks, and VD the virtual disks. Adding a letter to the end of each disk type specifies the sequence number of the disks. The first four partitions are the primary or extended partitions and are numbered from 1 to 4. The logical partitions start from 5. There are various disk partitioning schemes. Here, we will describe the MBR or Master Boot Record and GPT or GUID partition table. 
The MBR is located in a special sector in the beginning of the desk. The sector contains information about the bootloader of the installed system and the logical partitioning in the desk. Code from the sector is used to start the OS as follows. Start the BIOS of the main board, load the MBR in the BIOS, and then start the OS from the MBR. Although the MBR offers excellent compatibility and is easy to use, it is applicable only to disks with a maximum capacity of 2 TB. Otherwise, the access cannot be identified. Also, it only supports up to four primary partitions. So to create more partitions, a primary partition must serve as an extended partition and then logical partitions can be created in it. Another drawback is the partition and boot data are stored in the same place. And if the data is overwritten or damaged, the computer startup fails. Nowadays, as disk capacities grow, the 2 TB limit of the MBR partitioning scheme becomes a practical problem. Therefore, the MBR has gradually been replaced by the GPT partitioning. With the GPT scheme, there is no distinction between primary or logical partitions. Each disk supports up to 128 partitions, and the GPT allocates 64 bits to the logical block addresses. It can support a partition up to 18 EB. Now let's look at the partitioning tools FDesk and Parted. FDesk is one of the most common tools used for partitioning on Linux, but it doesn't support partitions larger than 2 TB. Here are the syntax and common options. By contrast, Parted supports disk partitions larger than 2 TB, making it more convenient to dynamically adjust the partition size. The syntax and common options are listed here. Disks must be formatted before mounting. Formatting is an operation of initializing a disk. Similarly, partition can also be formatted into different file systems for the upper layer operating system to invoke. All files should be backed up before formatting, as this operation will clear all files in the disk or partition. The basic steps are shown here. The make files command is used for formatting, which creates a Linux file system in a specific partition. The syntax and options involved are also displayed on the screen. On Linux, everything is a file. This requires connecting the disk and file in a process called mounting. A disk can be used only after it is formatted and mounted. The media and MNT directories in the root directory are mount point directories. Other directories can also be created as mount point directories. Mounting can be classified into temporary and permanent mounting. A file that is temporarily mounted to a directory using the mount command will become invalid after the system restarts, while permanent mounting will automatically mount the file upon startup. Permanent mounts can be created in the FS type file, which stores the static information about the file system. Upon startup, the system automatically reads information from the file and mounts the specified file system to its directory. This file format is listed here. To view disk information on Linux, we can use these commands displayed here. One is used to query all disks, while the other can only check the mounted disks. This concludes today's course. We hope you find it enlightening. Feel free to join us in our community discussions and remember to follow us on our socials. See you in the next course. Thank you for watching.